the opportunity to play international footy or represent Australia. So um, you know, a lot of us were you know, really embarrassed looking forward to this Rugby League World Cup because we have, you know, it's been three years since we could play for Australia and some guys hadn't debuted at all during that period. So um, yeah, definitely you look at um, you know, a tally of, of older players who have played 50, 40, 60 games for Australia. So um, there's even that much of experience we have in our side at the moment. So if we can get more, more international games at the end of the year or wherever we can fit it in, that would be, be great for Rugby League and great for Australia. Just a little one for Tom, please. Uh, what would it mean not only to you, but to your father and your brother you were to win the World Cup? And what's it like coaching your brother as part of the England team? I've never been asked that one before. Um, let me just start by saying thank you to John Dutton's team and, and the power squad in red as well. It's been an unbelievable tournament. And uh, for the wheelchair game to get the, the elevation of the platform that it's got, it's, it's been life changing for Tom and his teammates. So thank you for that. Um, it, it's an incredible experience to uh, to be in this position with uh, my dad and my brother. Um, when we first got involved with the game, we never envisaged that uh, we'd end up in a position like this. And uh, on the question about coaching my brother, we fall out all the time. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't think you'll mind me saying he, he struggles to accept criticism. And he, <laughs> he, he, um, the coach sat next to you will rather understand what I say when he's the person that you need to give a pat on the back nine times out of ten. So as a as a sibling it's quite hard to get your head around that because you're so used to teasing him. But uh, it's made me a better brother and a better person I would say because I've, I've learned how to praise uh, rather than just uh, being a, a big brother and teasing him all the time. <laughs> Great answer. Can I ask you Junior because uh, Jerome, great quote um, and it's been widely uh, the put in articles about rivalry with Penrith boys, Nathan Cleary. Um, you know, there's, there's only brothers and enemies out on the field. For you, up front, like, you know, play for one of your team, like Rick Campbell Gillard, headlong into him. Where do you sit on that? Um, yeah, it's probably going to be fun. Um, both the positions we play, it's all about laying the platform um, for, it, for the team. But um, I don't know, Mel, is he playing? Yeah, of course he is. First hitter. Yeah, that's right. Well, he's definitely got one of the best play one carries in the, in the game, so um, it, it's, it's going to be a good rivalry, but um, certainly one to enjoy as part of rugby league. One last look, I feel like an option here, any last bids? Because the hammer can fall. Uh, because we will have great opportunities upstairs and there's more than just the squad of um, players here. There's other uh, players that are available to you upstairs for one-on-one -on -one interviews. So um, I think we'll, let's not waste anyone's time. It's, uh, there's, a, there's a lot to go on between now and the matches. Um, I will just get you, Mal, and, and with all respect to everyone else here, Mal, you are an icon of our game of rugby league, but I will get you just to speak because this is a, as John said, this is a remarkable shot, folks. This is, you know, three disciplines of rugby league or three different competitions represented on stage now. This, this is a pretty cool get together that you can sit alongside and with some more of the rugby league more cut. We've got women's rugby league now at the level it is. We've got the wheelchair competition. We are all on the stage together. Um, pretty incredible in your life for rugby league now. Thanks. Awesome. Um, <laughs> really appreciate it. Mate. Well, you've got a history in politics. Uh, well, I was talking, well, not really. <laughs> 16 seconds, I said, no, I'm not going to do it. So, uh, but um, I, was talking, I was talking to a person, I'm going to tell you who I was speaking to yesterday about rugby league, particularly in the north of, north of England. And, um, and his comments to me was, it's a community sport, you know. We're, we're a sport, you know, born out of you know, blue collar, mines, you know, mining fraternity, north of England, um, Newcastle, all those places back home where um, you know, we, we, didn't, we didn't grow up with you know, a silver spoon, or, you know, we grew up with, with Samara or Tonga or Penrith, those sort of areas in, in Sydney as well. You know, we, we're people who you know, belong in the communities, we play a sport that we, that we love and we'll do anything to protect that sport. And regardless of gender, equity, you know, who we are, wheelchair, 
you know, physical disability, you know, women's, men's, you know, anyone. We, we, we love the sport and it's, 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 a, it's a thing that, it's a, it's a great feeling to be part of a community like that. And how it described it to me yesterday is that, you know, obviously you've got, you know, your public schools, that's the rugby, the, the, the soccer, you know, it's got heaps of money up here, but, you know, rugby league, the people that come along on Saturday afternoon and they'll go watch the wheelchairs, you know, tomorrow night because, yes, they're English and they support Samoa or they might, they might have a few support in Australia or a few might support New Zealand, but they go there and support rugby league if possible. Um, you know, a lot of people could have handed their tickets in, but they're not on, on Saturday because they want to come watch rugby league at its best. And I just think that that's what rugby league is. Rugby league is all about community. It's all about the people at the grassroots, growing up, you know, having their dreams, you know, not with a silver spoon in their mouths, you know, and, and you know, trying to achieve something that, you know, we know, it's, we know now it's possible, regardless of where you are or where you come from. Well said. Well, uh, in wrapping up this part of the proceedings, can I direct it to uh, Joe and Sylvain? Um, we can't wait for 2025. Uh, we'll see if France take a tr take a, a trophy on to 2025 and um, defend it. Thank you for your attendance today. To, to the two Toms, uh, all the very best. You kick off the finals action uh, tomorrow night, and I know that it's going to be something special. Uh, to the representatives of women's to New Zealand and Australia, all the very best. Bring it on. Never fails to uh, to deliver. And to the men's final um, for Mal and Matt and your two teams, uh, again, let rip. Um, let's have some fun. It's going to be you know, very special, and you get to experience Old Trafford. And that is the perfect stage. I regard it as as good as any stadium in the world. It has the best rugby league, has the best sport in the world, uh, appearing on that uh, turf on Saturday afternoon. Ladies